Good evening and welcome to the WDSU News Hot Seat. I'm Travers Mackle. Tonight, we conclude seven weeks of City Council debates for the races in New Orleans. Up tonight, City Council at Large Division 2. Five candidates qualified to run. Four of them are here tonight. One of the candidates, Jason Coleman, is out of the state and not available to attend. All candidates are vying to represent all of New Orleans as the at large seat covers the entire city. Incumbent Councilman Jason Williams is seeking re-election. He was first elected in 2014. Williams is a defense attorney and a former football player at Tulane University. Challenging Williams are seeking this position. David Baird, a Republican. Aaron Ace Christopher, no party affiliation. David Novak, a Democrat. And of course, Mr. Williams, thank you all for being here. We are going to start with brief opening statements. Mr. Williams, since you're the incumbent, we begin with you. You have 30 seconds for an opening remark. Thank you, Travers. I have been fighting for the people of the city of New Orleans in courts all of my professional life. And I brought those skills to City Hall to fight for all the citizens in City Hall. Now. Uh, I think that was most clear very recently after the, the, the most recent floods in August, uh, in which it became painfully obvious that we were being lied to about what was going on with Sewage and Water Board. Uh, I didn't go to City Hall to make friends. I went to City Hall to make a difference, and that's what I've done in the past three years. Mr. Novak, you have 30 seconds to make an opening statement. Well, I thank your audience for being tuned in to this very important election. We have a lot at, at stake right now in New Orleans and uh, across the country. Uh, personally, I'm running uh, as a homeowner since uh, 2002 in New Orleans. Uh, I've been 10 years in the New Orleans hospitality industry, and I currently now am foreman at a movie and television film equipment, uh, you know, doing the manufacturing of modern 21st century New Orleans. But I'm looking forward to making a 21st century pledge to the city. Thank you very much, Mr. Christopher. 30 seconds for opening remarks. My name is Aaron Christopher. I'm 34 years old. I am a property owner and a business owner here in the city of New Orleans. I've um, worked in technology for the past 15 years, uh, currently in real estate investing, and I'm here um, running for office to represent the people and the neglect that they've suffered. Thank you very much. Mr. Baird, 30 seconds for an opening statement as well. I'm David Baird. I'm old and uh, I'm a business owner, a veteran, and uh, I'm running to make Orleans Parish a better place. Um, I have um, really feel like the issues that are out here today are some of the ones that are affecting us, our children and our grandchildren, and we really need to take a real hard look at what's happened in city council, especially over the last four years. Uh, I feel like we need to really take and make our people in the city really more responsible. Thank you very much. We're going to have plenty of time for other questions, and we're going to begin this question with you. The embattled sewage and water board has had pump failures, and last week a boil water advisory was issued. If elected, Mr. Baird, what's the first thing you do to fix the issues at the sewage and water board? You have one minute to answer that question. Well, Travis, I've called for basically a state takeover of the sewer and water board like they took over the public school system in Orleans Parish uh, a, a few years ago after Hurricane Katrina. I believe that the leadership within our Orle uh, within the sewer and water board has been corrupt for some time and um, the federal government has uh, actually put some of the sewer and water board leadership in prison for their mishandling of funds public funds that have been misdirected and um, as a small business owner I have been put at um, disadvantage as probably Mr. Nowak has been also at being a um, in the hospitality business um, with this boil water orders. Um, I think that some of the leadership in city council has been just not looking at the important issues that have been facing the city over the past four years and those have been to see what has been the problem within the sewer and water board. Thank you very much. Mr. Christopher, a similar question. If elected, how do you make sure the sewage and water board is properly managing its massive budget? You have one minute for that question. Well, part of my platform is to um, examine the dichotomy of the current legislation for the city and its accounting. Um, there's a plethora of money that has been squandered with sewage and water board over the past 12 years. 
And so to ensure that this doesn't happen again, um, if elected, I plan to uh, establish um, instances that were taken out of the Office of Municipal Investigations uh, and to hold uh, public officials more accountable. There's no need, there's no reason that we should be approving budgets without itemized um, and uh, an intricate form of information uh, that's been going on the past few years, especially particularly with Sewage and Water Board. So uh, with that, I, I intend to do strict accounting with Sewage and Water Board and to uh, reestablish re legislation that holds public officials accountable. Thank you very much, Mr. Novak. The city council members were removed from the Sewage and Water Board. It was a controversial issue. In one minute, if you can explain your answer, do you believe that city council members need to be on or off the Sewage and Water Board? Uh, absolutely. Uh, in my personal opinion, the major function of the city council, uh, among many of its other responsibilities, is utility oversight. And so uh, I agree with the Inspector General, Ed Quattrovo, that the Sewage and Water Board should have never left the city's control, and it should go back to being 100% uh, city-owned and controlled agency. Uh, but beyond uh, that recommendation, I think that uh, the city council needs to be having uh, many and multiple open and transparent hearings. Uh, the fact that we were lied to uh, about the July 22nd and August 5th floods and that so much was going on that was not being transmitted to the public, that's an absolute uh, tragedy and it's uh, reprehensible from our city and public officials. Mr. Williams, why did it take a flood on August 5th to essentially wake everybody up and expose all of these flaws at the Sewage and Water Board? You have one minute also. Well, there were decades of mismanagement, and I, I'm not going to talk about what I will do in the next term. I can tell you what I did do in this term. I exposed the lies. I exposed the mismanagement. I called a special council meeting the Sunday after I left the Treme and heard from neighbors that the waters did not recede until 10 o'clock and went to a different neighborhood. Same story. So I knew the community was right and so I called a special meeting we had uh, Becker there we had Cedric Grant there and I cross-examined those folks until we got the truth now what I've called for now is, is a third party someone not on the mayor's office someone not in the city council office who can come in they can be from out of the country they can be from the United States and do a top to bottom review of whether or not we have the right governance or whether or not we we have the right infrastructure and where it belongs there certainly needs to be more oversight it we were taken off uh, prior to me being on the council by the last council they removed council members so clearly there's a governance issue clearly there's a management issue but a third party can tell us exactly what that is with that good autopsy we're going to turn to criminal justice here another big topic we're going to begin with you mr williams it's no secret in recent weeks you've clashed with the district attorney over his budget it was cut last year police are making more arrests should the da have more money to prosecute cases and should he have funding for that you have one minute to answer that question first and foremost i uh, pushed to increase the DA's budget my first two years on the council. Uh, during that time, we decided as a body that we would ask for empirical data, numbers from every silo in the criminal justice agency. The, the police department did that, the public defender's office did that, the judges did that, juvenile court judges did it. The DA has refused to do that. He has refused to share the empirical data of his office so that we can evaluate whether or not he's getting the results that we need. So until he shares that data, we don't know if his policies are working. So he, we should not increase his budget if he is not going to work with the other silos to make this city safer. That is a huge problem. We have to let data drive our policies. And, you know, giving money hand over fist to someone just because they say they need it, that's not how you get good government. Mr. Novak, similar question dealing with law enforcement here. There's been national news stories on the public defender's office, their workload, their funding. Is that office adequately funded, yes or no? You have one minute to explain your answer. Absolutely not. Uh, right now, uh, the United States is the incarceration uh, leader of the free world, uh, free in quotations. We incarcerate more people than India, China, and the UK combined. And New Orleans leads the nation in its incarceration rates. Uh, as of now, I find that one of the most offensive things about living in the city is that by living here, I'm a part of that incarceration system. 
uh, when it gets down to it, uh, we, we need to properly fund our, our district attorney, but we also need to properly fund our, uh, our public defendants. That is a constitutional right to legal representation, and the way that we have it properly funded, we are literally uh, violating the constitutional rights of anyone accused of a crime. Not necessarily every criminal, but everyone accused of a crime is not even getting that constitutional right afforded to them, and it's a tragedy. Mr. Christopher, let's talk about the jail. Obviously, the city of New Orleans greatly funds that entity. If elected, do you feel the jail gets enough funding? Do they need more? Do they need less? You have one minute to explain your answer. Well, I think that the funding to sustain the prison is adequate already. I think we spend too much money in turning New Orleans into a police state rather than investing in our children and providing activities for them so that they don't end up in trouble. So I think that we need to be focusing on um, bringing forth funding for education and promoting education and civil engagement within our youth because when it comes down to crime in the city of New Orleans the age range is from 16 to 25 years old so we definitely need more things uh, for our children to engage in and I, I believe that it will resolve the crime issue and reduce crime and statistically throughout the world there are studies that have shown that when you educate the crime actually decreases. Mr. Baird what about the coroner's office opioid deaths last year in Orleans Parish actually exceeded the homicide rate is that office adequately funded right now? Do they need more money, less money? You have one minute also to explain your answer. The coroner's office is basically going through a major transition over the last uh, three years as it moved out of its old facility on um, Melpamine uh, Martin Luther King over to its new facility over there on Earhart. Um, it's been refunded and reimagined over to its new facility. However, its staff has um, basically remained the same. Um, one of the things that the coroner's office hasn't had was an extra amount of staff to um, do more forensic analysis of the types of uh, deaths. So um, we still are struggling as to classifications on a large number of people that have um, perished throughout the parish. Um, I'd say that the coroner's office um, would have to be working hand in hand with EMS and EMS is in the same facility right now so that I think those particular issues could probably be addressed um, jointly at the budget me meeting with um, the, the, the leadership within City Hall. Uh, so as far as um, what can the coroner's office be looking forward to? have possibly some help from EMS. Here's a quick yes or no answer. We're going to start with you, Mr. Baird. Does the city council need to discuss, and let me stress the term, discuss the removal of more Confederate era monuments in the city of New Orleans? Well, uh, Travis, one of the things um, I, I really want to propose this right off the top. As far as Lee Circle is concerned, I'd like to come out and say that I'm looking to see Lee Circle reimagined and renamed Musician Circle so that that would possibly be something that we can all be proud of within this city. R as really far quick, as we just need a yes or no answer. I hate, to, I hate to put you on the spot. Uh, I would say no. Okay, how about you, Mr. Christopher? Yes or no, does the city council need to discuss the removal of more Confederate monuments in the city? Yes. How about you, Mr. Novak? Yes, and transparently and open to the public. Mr. Williams? Yes, we can talk about that after we've talked about jobs, infrastructure, police manpower, and a host of other things. It is not on the top of the list. All right, let's start with you. Yes or no answer, Mr. Williams. Do you support red light traffic and speed cameras in the city of New Orleans, yes or no? Budget can't survive without it, yes. How about you, Mr. Novak? Absolutely not, I'll get rid of everyone. How about you, Mr. Christopher? No. How about you, Mr. Baird? No. All right, Mr. Baird, let's go with the law enforcement question. You have one minute to answer this question. If elected, how would you work to recruit and retain more police officers? A lot of people talk about it, but how would you actually do that? One minute. I think one of the biggest problems that we have with NOPD has been their assignments. And um, as far as what we are using as far as tactical tools, um, I think that is where a lot of our police officers have been let down. Um, when we are using better systems here throughout the parish to do investigations, um, we should be able to, t to target individuals that are high 
in the high crime areas. And then if we do find somebody, we should be able to do something with that individual so that if a, if a policeman is absolutely in the first line of defense arresting somebody, he shouldn't have to be worrying about that guy being back out on the streets within the next few days. Um, if we look at our statistics, we arrested somewhere around uh, 50,000 people back in uh, 13 and this last year um, they only arrested 17,000 people so there was a major disparity in the number of arrests that were made and I think some of those statistics are bearing themselves out with the police force. Mr. Christopher, if elected, how do you work with the NOPD and how does the NOPD better improve response times across the city? You have one minute as well. Well, I think the, an improvement in the response times would be attributed to the uh, lack of empathy that many officers have for the citizens in New Orleans. I believe that if they um, wear a badge that they should serve the people expeditiously and um with, and as far as working with the police, um, I believe that they need more training on civil engagement and um, I believe that um, they should be um, mediating more issues than, uh, than trying to meet a quota or, or something like that to, uh, you know, mandates and stuff like that. Uh, with unnecessary arrests because there are so many unnecessary arrests that go on every day in the city of New Orleans and people just can't afford um, access to justice many of those times. So I believe that the, with the proper training, we can reduce crime with the staff that we have already. Mr. Novak, if elected, how would you work with the police to lower the number of shootings? It's a big problem across the city right now. You also have one minute for that question. Well, uh, in this race, one thing that has been truly humbling is having people come forward with their own questions, uh, their own issues, things that uh, I've advocated for years, but other things that I was unaware of before I became a candidate. But obviously, uh, the gun violence in New Orleans uh, is, is terrible, and, and it is not something that we want in a 21st century New Orleans. Uh, to me, everything's intersectional. The way that you address gun violence is through addressing economic inequality. It's uh, also through addressing the municipal codes and what is or is not a crime. Right now, with the way we have treated our war on drugs, uh, a lot of those crimes are literally fighting over drug, uh, drug territories and, and drug turf. And we need to have an honest discussion about what we want to decriminalize or legalize as far as uh, you know, nonviolent uh, drugs on the streets that we could then tax and regulate and get police officers working on the actual violent crimes as they happen. Mr. Williams, in one minute, are police officers paid enough? And depending on your answer, how does the city find more money for them in the city's fragile budget? Well, I'm going to tell you this, Travers. Uh, I have a, a number of friends that are police officers, and they don't, they don't take on that job because they want to get rich. They don't do it for the money. It's a passion. It's a calling. It's an ultimate sacrifice of self and sacrifice for your family. Uh, but we have fought for, and I've obtained an across-the-board pay raise for all of our officers. So now that they're making the same amount of money that you can make with the state police, better than you can in any other parish. Problem is that came far too late. It should have come a whole lot sooner. What we need to do is improve the respect that City Hall has for its police officers. One, making sure that we build up morale by having a detail system that works for them. Three, by giving them training that empowers them to be better officers, engage the community with community policing, and make better reports that stand up in court. That's going to make everything work better in, in, in criminal district court, and it's going to be more efficient for our police officers. And better deploy them. Have them in the neighborhoods, on horses, on bikes, and on foot, talking to people every day. We are running out of time. We're going to give you about 20 seconds each to make a brief closing statement. Mr. Baird, we're going to start with you. 20 seconds for a closing remark. Well, I'd like to say that uh, I don't want to be the status quo in City Hall. I'd like to see our parish become stronger, better, and a better place to live. People feel a little less at risk in our community, uh, feel safer in their homes at night, and feel that their children have a really good place and can bring them to schools and a nice, safe community. Mr. Christopher, 20 seconds for a closing remark. They say that insanity is doing the same things over and over and expecting different results. Well, it's time for a change, and it's time 
that the people of the city of New Orleans be represented. And that's where I'm running for office. So vote number 54. Mr. Novak, 20 seconds for a close. I didn't decide to run for this race until I had multiple people lobby me. Uh, as far as I understand it, there's people throughout uh, the city who feel that uh, not only the mayor, the city, uh, but specifically Jason Williams have not delivered what they need. Uh, people are getting pushed out of their homes. Uh, people can't afford the city anymore. Crime is out of control. And I'm just putting myself forward as a bold alternative. Uh, I know I've made a lot of big promises. I don't know if I can necessarily achieve all of them, but I'm going to try, and that's better than not trying at all. And Mr. Williams, finally, 20 seconds for a closing statement. Unlike Mr. Novak, I know what I can achieve because the proof is in the pudding. In the past three years, I have proven that I will stand up for the people of this city. That was proven in my very first council meeting when I stood up with the people from Holy Cross when they said that development wouldn't work. To date, there's not a shovel in the ground. I moved a million dollars in the budget so we could pay 911 officers what they deserve. I fought and won pay raises for police officers. I took on the sewage and water boat and they were lying to us. Now we all know the truth. I know that's not enough, guys, but I can tell you, I know that there's more to be done and I'm not done yet. All right, Jason Williams, David Novak, Aaron Christopher and David Baird, we appreciate your time. These are the four candidates running for city council at large, division two. I'm Travers Mackle, this is The Hot Seat. That is all the time we have for tonight. Let's send it back to you at the news desk.